Turkish Airlines presents Business Africa. Africa is increasingly wielding its way into the global stage. In this edition of Business Africa, we explore the dynamics of international relations and the effect on the economy. I'm your host, Afolake Oiloi. The major stories this week. Russia, which desperately wants allies, is hosting Russia-Africa summit. Food security and Wagner Group are some of the key questions on the agenda. The Angolan Kwanzaa is one of the worst performing African currencies this year as low oil prices and increase in debt payments have increased has made it harder for the central bank to pump it up. As the African continent strives to boost its influence on the global stage, 18 countries met in Gabon to operationalize the Association of Administrative Management Bodies of African Economic Zones. Many African countries have taken a neutral stance over the conflict in Ukraine as they seek to strike a delicate balance between relations with Russia and the Western allies. And yet Russia's recent decision to end a grain deal that allowed safe passage of grains from Ukraine has led to higher food and oil prices for many African nations. The second Russia-Africa summit which brings about a new level of mutually beneficial partnership between Russia and the African continent comes as Moscow continues to wage war against Ukraine. The Russia-Africa summit comes at a time when Vladimir Putin's government is under a lot of international pressure against its ongoing invasion of Ukraine. The UN General Assembly in February passed a resolution demanding that Russia end the war and leave Ukrainian territory, while 141 countries voted in favor, two African countries voted against it, and 15 abstained. Yet, Africa, where Russia hopes to get allies, is the continent likely to be most affected by Russia's termination of the deal that was keeping grains flowing from Ukraine. Putin is under new pressure to demonstrate commitment to a continent of 1.3 billion people that is increasingly assertive on the global stage. He has repeatedly said that Russia would offer free grain to low-income African countries now that the grain deal has been terminated. I want to assure you that our country is able to replace Ukrainian grain both commercially and free of charge. Moreover, this year we again expect a record harvest. These assertions raise global concerns about Russia's geopolitical maneuvers, prompting calls for increased vigilance in dealing with their aid initiatives. Any assistance which Russia can provide to other countries, it will be only in order to put their countries into political dependence of Russia and then um, push them, their leadership, uh, to vote in a proper way on General Assembly sessions. Despite its high profile in Africa, Russia pledged to double its trade with the continent within five years at the 2019 Russia-Africa summit. Instead, Moscow offers less than 1% of Africa's foreign direct investment, FDIs, with almost no humanitarian aid, stalling at around $18 billion annually. Thus, the summit provides African heads of state an opportunity to continue talks with President Putin on confidence-building measures for peace between Russia and Ukraine. Gustavo Cavallo is a senior researcher on Africa-Russia ties in African governance and diplomacy program at Desire. He's joining us for more on that insights. Thank you so much for joining the show. Now, you've said that Africa must know what it needs. Now, what are the things Africa needs and what can it gain from harnessing such relationship from, um, from Russia? What we have seen in the last couple of years is that uh, many African countries have seen the relationship with Russia as an opportunity, on the one hand, to gain historical, uh, to gain political leverage. And I, and I think that idea of diversifying relations, of engaging with a wider variety of countries. But it does showcase that much of the relationship is actually not a society to society. We need to understand that Russia, in a way, is not alone in that process. We know at a political level, there is a close interaction between them. But at an economic level, it's still fairly small. We talk about between 14 and $16 billion that Russia trades with Africa on an annual basis. 
but majority of that is largely with North, uh, with North Africa. And, but we don't see such a degree of sophistication in terms of the, the bilateral relation to be as complex than we see with Western countries or even with countries like China or India. Now, how can Africa cushion itself from the effect of Russia not cooperating to keep the grain prices low? Uh, for the first couple of months before the grain deal that was signed in 2022 and broke by Turkey and the UN, uh, we saw quite a, lot, uh, quite a high increase in terms of prices of grains. And that had a very specific impact to the African continent. So to a large degree, I think what we will be seeing is that when African countries are negatively impacted by potential increase of price of grains, we would then probably see a change in terms of how these countries are engaging with Russia. We saw that with the visit of the, the, the seven countries that went on the African peace mission to Kiev and St. Petersburg. That was a quite an important aspect of that with the Russia-Africa summit and a quite a large number of African delegations going there and potentially putting a lot of pressure on the Russians to ensure that this grain deal is once again signed between the different parties. Now, talking about the BRICS, how can Africa contribute to the goals of the BRICS bloc? The first of them is an important discussion around expansion of BRICS. We've seen BRICS so far only having seen one expansion in 2011 when South Africa was invited to join. And for many of these countries, joining BRICS has an implication in terms of their own voice in global affairs and the engagements that African countries can have and the influence they can have in terms of international debates. And that comes directly in terms of the discussions around the role of the U.S. dollar and how we can think of alternative currencies, both in terms of trade, but also in terms of uh, currency for, for reserves. We've seen in recent weeks talk about bringing back the, the use of the gold as pegging to some of these currencies and enabling the trade. And those discussions, maybe BRICS won't be the avenue to resolve that, but it's important that those engagements are, 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 are held, and particularly in the context of Africa, where we have BRICS summits being held in the continent will be a particularly important one and a very important summit for us to look what the decisions will be made. Well, it's nice having you on the show. Thank you so much. Now, the Angolan Kwanzaa is one of the worst performing African currencies this year as low oil prices and an increase in debt payment have made it harder for the central bank to prop it up. Our Angolan correspondent provides a report on the update of the country's economic and financial situation. In Angola, the national currency, the Kwanzaa, is plummeting as a result of a fragile economy. The Angolan Treasury is allocating revenues in foreign currency to pay off debt without replacing it with new foreign currency. A consultant from the Fitch Solutions Group predicts that the Angolan national currency could slide like this for the rest of the year, falling by 16.8 percent from an average point of 830 Kwanzaas to the dollar to 1,000 Kwanzaas to the dollar. The way our economy is structured today is based on a strong demand for hard currency due to the fact that we have an economy that imports a lot of different goods goods and services in a structural way. Deloitte is analyzing the banking sector in order to assess and project the economic health of the country's banks. The forecasts point to grim weather ahead amid rising inflation concerns and the Treasury's unwillingness to intervene in the markets. The Angolan economy is mainly based on its oil revenues and its diamond market. The international situation was also unfavorable with the conflict in Europe all of which contributed to less production and less productivity. As a result, supply fell and prices rose. Stakes are high and deadlines on the horizon as Angola must avoid returning on the list of countries with strategic deficiencies in international financial standards. Meeting in Libreville, 18 countries from across the continent signed statutes governing the operation of Association of Administrative Management Bodies of African Economic Zones with the aim of competing more effectively with other regions of the world in emerging markets. Here are the details from our correspondents in Gabon. In Libreville, 10 countries have joined forces to found the association governing special economic zones in Africa. The aim is to boost the continent's competitiveness in emerging markets. The objectives of our statutes are precisely to ensure the sharing and promotion of experience between our different economic zones. The Nkok economic zone has been gaining experience since 2010. 
with its niche being the processing of Gabonese timber for export, the zone's potential has grown over the last 13 years. Special economic zones are proliferating across the continent, but despite their successes, their track record remains mixed. The association aims to give impetus to the creation of free trade zones on the African continent and thus accelerate South-South integration. The association will serve as an advocate for African countries to effectively give value to all products from member countries of this association. A report by the ECOFIN agency in April 2023 shows that African special economic zones are not sufficiently specialized. 89% of them are multi-sectoral. Only Ethiopia, Gabo and Morocco have so far developed specific zones to exploit their comparative advantages in specific sectors. That story from Gabon brings us to the end of this week's edition of Business Africa. For more stories and news, stay tuned to African News and AfricanNews.com. Business Africa was presented by Turkish Airlines.